Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the MSNS Podcast. I am your host, Ryan Lim. And I am Alan. I am your other host. So this week, we're going to be together, and we're only going to be doing a dual podcast. I hope that's good with everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so I think for this week, I think we're going to be going over finals as finals are coming up. Um, I know everyone has been working super hard over the semester, you know. Um, And it's just like, I think for me and Ryan, we just wanted to talk about it because for for a lot of us, finals week is something that comes up and it's just like a super big event that's like looming over our heads, especially over the holidays when we're just supposed to be spending time with our family. Yeah. Yeah. And before we talk about kind of like our strategies and like how we prepare for finals, I kind of wanted to ask Alan, like personally, like what is your overall take on like all the finals that you've been through? like since freshman year, like how have you kind of felt about them? Do you have any stories? You know, cause I know like personally for me, like sometimes studying for those midterms and finals, that's when like the funniest shit happens, yeah. that's, you know? Yeah. So what is your take on it? Like, there's always some like random shit that happens like right before finals, like some shit just comes up, you know? And, 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 and then you're just, you're always caught up in it. Like for me, at least when it comes to finals, I never really stressed out about it because I think in, uh, especially in high school, um, uh, as many of you probably don't know, I went to Lowell High School in San Francisco. So it's one of the more like, more like rigorous high schools in San Francisco and finals week there was, I think, was something that really prepared me for what came in college, you know? Cause um, I took a few APs here and there every year. So when finals came up, you don't really have to take those. Right, because you have to like prep for the like the AP tests and everything. Um, but for the other classes, they were actually pretty, um, pretty in depth when it comes to like studying and making sure you have all the content done. Um, but at that school, they they spread it out where you had enough time to study in between. So um, I used all that time to really studied and just put together everything that I know and learned throughout the semester to help me succeed in those classes. Okay. And um, you talked about um, certain obstacles that came up like during finals that kind of like impeded maybe some of the study time that you could have had. Like, can you talk yeah. a little bit more about that? Yeah, of course. So, so like um, in college, like there's always things that come up for work. And I think like, uh, and my family owns a small business around USF. So something has come up with that. Like always something comes up. Like, mm-hmm. I don't remember what, but like something always comes up, but it's always good to have um, a workaround when, when it comes to that kind of stuff. Cause then you still want to be able to study, but the other things just have more importance during that time. Right. So I never had this fear of like not being able to succeed in my classes Right, because especially at USF, I think, and in the nursing program, a lot of the times, all of your assignments all accumulate together for your grade, right? So, like, if you do well on those assignments and you really focus and, like, you you took your time and put some effort into your assignments, I really don't think that, like, a final is the end all, you know? No. Because then, even though it's like so important to study for that because it is a big part of your grade if you succeed in other aspects of your of your learning in other parts of the class you'll you'll be fine you know yeah and i think i remember um something that my uh high school chemistry teacher told me was uh like his thing for uh college his you know approach to it was if you work your ass off the whole semester getting those a's learning actually developing that critical thinking mindset then your grades probably built up to a point where you can probably fail the final not fail but like close to fail the final but still be okay and for me i didn't like when i uh for some people i think when they hear that they kind of think like oh that means i don't have to study for the final like i'm chill like i don't have to like you know care about the final at all but i think the way i see it is that uh, you've kind of built up that foundation throughout the semester so that you don't have to have as much pressure in the final like i still encourage no matter what your grade is like you should still like work your ass off study for the final because that's still a part of your learning experience that will contribute to what uh, like you being a nurse in the future and but at the same time yes like 
I was super thankful that I did. I kind of followed what my chemistry teacher said, like, hey, work your ass off so that, you know, you can study without that extra pressure that I think a lot of nursing students have when it comes to like crunch time. Yeah, because then, and it's not all about studying, right? Um, I think what really helps is that you set your, give yourself a schedule. Like if you're going to study, like most parts of the day, like give give yourself like half hour breaks in between just to do random shit, you know, just, just play a game or like read a book, go outside, do some exercises, you know, even though like oh, I know we're under quarantine right now and everyone's like just staying at home, like always just try to find that little time in between just to refresh your brain, like let, let that information really settle mm-hmm. before you study again. And if anything, just try not to study like 24 hours like get, give Jesus. yourself some sleep Jesus. you know give yourself a few hours of just free time give yourself like a like an hour or two just talking with family and friends like it's not all about studying like if you make yourself a good schedule and you understand what you really have to go over before the final you'll be fine mm-hmm. right so additionally i think if you show up to class you know your teacher will tell you what's going to be on the final right so majority a lot of the times i think in nursing school it's not accumulative you know so so pe- we have a choice right we we'll either go like like the last few chapters and go over that right so i i, I that's what i would do i would go more in depth with those few chapters right and just skim over the things i've learned before because we've got tested on that yeah right so that, that that study habit actually helps a lot because then it cuts down my study time and increases my test scores. Yeah. Like for me, being an A student is not about it. Like that, that's not my end all. That's not my goal. But like just being in, like enabling myself to do well because I want to see myself do well in nursing school. I want that. I want that A. Mm-hmm. Right? So I just have to find, I found these strategies that enabled me to really go ahead and like still do all the things that I do on a normal basis and not have studying impede what I've been already doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I think I had the same thing, like, especially, especially freshman year where um, I had the strategy of kind of studying a little bit every day. Like I would take like, an, like, like, for example, a microbiome, like freshman one, I would study every day for like an hour, like every single day, probably not the weekends, but then, uh, but once it came time to a midterm or a final, while I think a lot of people were struggling because that was the first time they would ever see the material, yeah, I was kind of just chilling. Like, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. this is a review for me. But then it also made everything so funny during finals because, um, but I was like still worried too. But like, when you just enter the library, like at USF during finals time, like it's packed, you it's see the environment. Yeah. Like, honestly, it's kind of inspiring because you kind of see that everyone's on the grind. But it's also super funny because you can tell everybody's at their like lowest point in life, like at that moment. Right, these guys are so stressed, and I'm just stressing with them, dude. Every time I walk inside a library, you just feel the air just like mm-hmm. come over your shoulder. You're just like, damn, bro. Like, yeah. Are you serious right now? Like, I really don't want to study, but because everyone's studying, I gotta do yeah. it. Yeah. And I feel I- like that's like one thing that being in quarantine and just having school at home just like it's really really hard you know sometimes it's hard to find that motivation to do it Mm -hmm. so I feel like always communicating with your friends asking them how they're doing what they're studying really just pushes you forward Mm -hmm. and enables you to really go ahead and have that study motivation yeah I never realized how motivating it really was to just have like-minded peers and friends with you as you were studying because uh all throughout um especially my life like I would just study in my room like this alone yeah. uh, I'm an only child I don't have any siblings where I can like really mm-hmm. just talk to after it was just like me the whole time and then freshman year came when I was suddenly living with people when I've never lived with people before and like suddenly studying studying in groups when I've never done that before like yeah. it was such a huge shock because I think at first I didn't like it because I've never done it before and I think I always equate being with friends as a social thing. So I would start talking to people when they were studying, but then like soon after I kind of got, you know, the status quo, like, Oh yeah, I should probably be studying as they're studying. And it just really did help. Like as, cause you, when you hear that kind of silence, it's, it's a weird, but it's like a very loud science that speaks so much volume to like how much work we're putting into this nursing program. Yeah. And I just, just to like piggyback off what you're saying, like about group studies, I think it's a good thing for certain people. 
right? If it works for you, it works for you. But for me, um, I enjoy being with people when I study, but I don't enjoy group studying, if that makes any sense. So but just let me like go, go over just a little bit more in depth. It's more like when I'm studying, I like to be alone. I like to go over my, my own, uh, my own, I'm sorry, I'm blanking right now. Just my own like content, right? And like, I don't like it when I have to talk to other people about it it's not because i don't like them it's more just like i'm trying to focus on what i need to know right now mm-hmm. right so a lot of times even when i do do group studies i have these noise canceling headphones um that i use to really help me focus on what the uh, like the content i'm going over for that specific final or whatever midterm that i'm going over and as much as group studying is a good thing just sometimes you just get too deep into it and it just be it ends up just being conversations yeah <laughs> and you and you just end up not studying for the time that you're there you know and for me like having a lot of time restraints and like just having like a such tight tightly packed schedule you know and additionally i want to sleep my full six seven hours mm-hmm. it's really really hard yeah. you know just to really be like i will totally be with them after the final right i have i have no problem having fun and everything like that but the problem is it's just i just don't like group studying mm-hmm. it's just not something that i like to do and like for, for people that do i don't really like mark you guys off for it you know like you guys do what you do i do what i do everyone has their own different little you know rituals when it comes to studying so it's it's all good mm-hmm. and yeah i kind of agree with that because yeah my thing um before quarantine was because I knew my habit that if I was in a group, I was going to start talking no matter what I would study my ass off, like completely alone for like the first couple weeks or whatever until final. And then once finals hit like the last two or three days, I knew that I was already secure and set with my knowledge so that once I did go into a group, whether whether we were just like fucking around or actually studying, I was still Mm -hmm. prepared regardless. But I think it was good that, you study alone and, and secure that knowledge first and then bring it to your group. Cause once you're in that group, you know, so, like, of course, sometimes there's going to be conversations, but a lot of mm-hmm. times when you're talking, you're probably talking about the topics. There's going to be some people that haven't even touched the material yet. Oh, and they're yeah. asking you like, yeah, Hey, yeah. what do you think? And I think, yeah, don't do that guys. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. But there are always going to be those people. And yeah. I think, you know, having you being secure with your knowledge and, you know, teaching them what you know already like helps you even more and I think that's what I kind of advise everyone if you're going to do group work hopefully study first and then have something that you can bring to the table when you have that nursing conversation with your exactly. group yeah. yeah and it's just like if if you decide to really study at the last minute right like you know, more power to you like if it works it works you know but just just uh, like a little caveat on top of that it's just like if you focus a lot in class and you take really good notes and you you put your attention every like every single time you're in class for those two three hours i think you'll be okay at the end of the day if you're going to study those last few th- uh, last few days because you've been working so hard in class trying to get the content you've been doing the assignments you get everything like that's okay that that's how you study that's how you get everything that's 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 cool for you right like for ryan like y- you said like you study even uh, weeks before, you know, you're studying like a little bit every day and that's perfect. That's how you like to study, you know? Like for me, at least I like to study um, a, like a week before or like during that week before that final mm-hmm. um, because I, I pay a lot of attention in class. I take pretty good notes. So like when I go over it, I'm just like, oh, I remember that, you know? Oh, I remember that now. Like if anything in nursing school, I think the hardest thing to really go over and really understand is just probably the medication. Yeah, yeah. Like for for me at least, like getting all these nursing skills down, it's more like having that experience, having that um, ability to think in that nursing sense. Mm-hmm. You know, like you develop that nursing sense throughout your nursing career. Like after my first um, my first fundamentals, I was like, oh, okay, I have to think about nursing like this. Mm-hmm. And that enabled me to succeed in all my other nursing classes because I just thought about it differently, right? Because nursing school isn't like your typical classes. It's not like your, your chemistry classes in, in high school. It's not, it's not your calculus classes oh, in high school, those right? Are the days. Yeah, like it, it's just a, a, like the learning you get from nursing school is just so different. It, it's just so special too, right? Agreed, yeah. And it's just, there's just different ways to go about it. 
Like if you if you choose to study the last day, that's on you, man. I don't care. You succeed, you succeed, man. Like go ahead. I'm not I'm not gonna mark you off for that. I'm gonna be like, damn, bro, good shit. Also, studied, yeah, like, you clutched it, bro. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah like you, you clutched it at the end, man. Like I, I'm not gonna say shit, mm. but this is all more power to you. However you like to study, go ahead and do it. Just make sure you have an ample amount of time to go over everything if you need to, and an ample amount of time to just take a rest and like go to sleep, man. Don't don't drink coffee for the next 72 hours and hope you're gonna stay up that long. It's it's not gonna Jeez. work. Let me tell you. Yeah, like uh, I don't know. I think yeah, I think of course everyone has their individual way of studying, whether it's kind of spraying it out or grinding it at the end. But I think in order to kind of be kind to yourself and to your body and yeah. your mind at the end yeah. of everything, you should probably spread it out. Like we're not going to enforce this, like, you know, what we think is healthy. Cause I've definitely gone the very unhealthy route as well. But, yeah. You know, I think I agree. do you have like a story about that? Like, or do you have a, like something, whether it's in college or high school where you kind of went down that unhealthy route and you kind of learn from it in order to like have that mindset that you have now? Um, I think, in high school um it's just more it's more like i didn't have a lot of time in in between uh to study because then i had you know i was part of the i was some team captain you know and i I helped my parents with their business and then i actually swam for a club too alongside with my 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 high school team so there's just a lot of things going on and a lot of the times i'm more productive at night so i just ended up studying at night anyway but what I said before about just studying at the end and like knowing all the all the details and all like the content beforehand, like that's actually really accurate because that's what happened to me in my AP psych class, right? So by the time when the test came up, um, I was pretty much prepared, but I really did want to go over all that information at the end, right? So I I I, op- I opened my can of monster, put that shit next to my desk, <laughs> you know. And I just like, all right, time to grind, right? So I would grind to like one, one to two and just be like happy with what I went over. But the I think this would be like two days, two days that I would do this. And I ended up doing very well on the test right? because I knew the content a lot beforehand. And I and I actually was pretty passionate about psychology. It, that, that also really helped. So that getting that experience, I really didn't want to transfer over, uh, use that and transfer it over to college. I think initially, um, at least for a lot of my core classes my freshman year, I didn't really do that well because I actually wasn't that motivated, right? And it, it happens, like you yeah. get over it. Um, and additionally, just coming from, uh, like just having weird classes and like having so much things going on outside of school, it was just really hard to connect with people um, and have like a good connection because for one, I live off campus. I'm from San Francisco, so I live at home. So I didn't live in the dorms. I didn't have that dorm experience, which I'm fine with, but it's just really hard to build more connections that way, mm-hmm. you know? And I didn't see like my little, my little friends that did come over for uh, nursing school because they had different, they had different classes. They were doing different things too. So it's just having that lack of motivation sometimes really affects uh, your studying and affects your grades. So I just hope that everyone um, in, within MSNS is able to really find those resources yeah. um, in MSNS. Like, don't don't be afraid to come up to us. We're, we're super friendly. Like, that's how I met a lot of these homies right here. Like, my my, my boy Ryan here, and my boy Jordan, my, my boy Michael. You know, like, all these people come in, per, uh, like, periodically. You know, like, you, you gain a little group of everyone, and they give you all that motivation to keep going oh, yeah i'm just like super appreciative of that because without that i don't think i would be doing well in nursing school right from from getting like b's and like what sci- uh, sci- ph- physiology and um, anatomy to like just killing it in all my nursing classes whether it be patho or fundamentals or anything like that like uh, i'm doing well for myself it's because people are pushing me yeah. and i found that motivation again and i love the I don't know how to explain like the duality of all the nursing students, especially that I've been around, have been fortunate to be around, uh, you know, pre-quarantine when we were grinding through everything. Um, Cause 
you can see that everyone was giving each other advice. Everyone was motivating each other, backing yeah. each other up, hyping everyone up. Like, hey, we got this. Like, even but then at the same time, you can just look in their eyes and see like the death in their eyes of just like being sleep deprived and a little bit stressed and scared about what's gonna be on the test. Yeah. And I, it was kind of nice to have that because you can see like, hey, these people are motivating me. I have this like drive to keep going but you can also say hey like see how like hey i'm not alone in this like i'm like a little scared but i it's nice to have people around me that are a little stressed and worried about everything so that you don't feel isolated and like feel like it's just a you problem because i think it really isn't a you problem when you have that stress not only during finals but like midterms quizzes or just like in general nursing school like it's nice to know that you're never alone in that that there's always going to be other people that are also stressed but it's nice that everyone regardless of their level of stress is kind of always there to be that community and push you further and further, not just for themselves, but for, you know, the person right next to them. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, bro. Oh, it's so sad. I miss, I miss being on campus so much, man. Yeah, it's, I do. I it's kind of crazy. I know. Like just thinking about how everyone's super motivated in the library, just to think about like how I miss being on campus, how I miss being in class. Like for one, I just like over um, this semester because it's all it's it's all been online. It, it's been really hard to really like keep yourself motivated to to like really yeah, go yeah. go over the classes in depth, so, like really study like how you studied before, because it's just like it's online school, right? Yeah. And, and there's just and you have so much free time in between. In between, I feel like you 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 can use utilize that time and enable yourself to do fine on quizzes and everything like that it's just like you don't have those people around you it's to really so push yourself forward yeah and it's just i don't know i just miss school man i miss yeah. going back to campus yeah like like what were we gonna say i just i just wanted to say like um for the people that know me they they probably know that uh, i really don't like schooling but i like going to school the people right? are amazing you know <laughs> the I, I love going to school but i just don't like doing the school i feel that no i i, I feel that i'm sure a lot of the viewers feel that too honestly <laughs> yeah but i don't know for me like it was so amazing get it to getting to know people during those dark times because yeah. yeah you know when i think of like a friend like i've had this conversation with a lot of my friends before like like what like what criteria like not like well kind of like an unspoken or unconscious criteria of like what makes a friend or a best friend and for me like when I really thought about it and reflected upon my interaction with people like when I think of like maybe like an acquaintance or someone is it someone or just like a stranger it's someone that kind of celebrates with you during all the highs like oh you did this congratulations let's go out and eat but I think when I really come down to like a friend or best friend I think of someone who's gonna be with you through all the lows all the struggles and all the dark times and I think you know, when I had that kind of group of people when I was studying with them, seeing them struggle, seeing me struggle. And, you know, during those breaks, struggle together. (laughs) And we got to like open up, like we just, we didn't talk about just nursing. We were able to talk about life and all this because I think we were all just willing to be so vulnerable with each other during that time. It was just really nice. And I think it created a greater bond. Yeah, I agree. Excuse me. It's just like having that, good you know supportive supportive friends around you really helps you out with really understanding how you're uh, like understanding your emotions during that time because like i said before finals is super super stressful it's nothing to really laugh at right if you don't take it seriously i don't think you're going to do that well um and just having those people around you really just helps you get all that emotional stress and those emotional feelings out of the way and just really enables you and pushes you to do well while you study and you know let it out like don't, if you're feeling stressed yeah. and all that like don't like suppress that because that's just gonna make everything much that much worse like i have had times where i literally let it out meaning i like yelled in the library uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah like because it was the second floor so i think it was fine because everybody yeah, was just yeah. like panicking but i was just like I think I was, it was in a very big room on the second floor. I think I was studying mm-hmm. with Jordan and like, I think it was like your group of friends, like from Lowell mm-hmm. too. We were all just grinding. It was super silent. But then like, I think I just got all angsty. Yeah. And then I just like suddenly like, just stood fuck. up and I was like, 
fuck oh my god what am i doing dude yeah it was just dude. it was so funny like i started laughing everybody started laughing it was so like, like just talking about sh- yeah you're just talking about stress man like that shit it really does suck and they transfer over to like everything else like i feel like um not being able to go work out but during Ooh, finals time dude. man that that shit fucking Ooh. drained me Ooh. let me tell you like uh, back at school and before quarantine i used to do i, I used to work out a lot and, and do like all my swimming stuff and also like try to climb at night so it's just like ha- not having those things anymore just makes me like so i'm like oh my mm-hmm. god where is the stress going because all those things that i like i've come to realize really helped me like relieve my stress and like don't have don't have to think about my task at hand i'm just thinking about what i'm doing at that moment and that really helps me reset uh, reset my head reset my brain so i can study later but not having that stuff man oh my god let me tell you i just wanted to just jump off the sec- second floor of the library <laughs> into that water man look, oh my god i, I like oh god. i was so stressed so you know like like you said also i'm almost so angsty because then it's just not having those things there to help you reset is, is really hard. That's why I always tell people, man, just take a break. Go ahead and do that swimming. Go ahead and go do that working out. Go ahead, do some reading. Go ahead and do some, you know, do, do your art or whatever you like to do on your free time, right? If you want to go to sleep early, wake up early to study, go ahead. You want your sleep, go ahead, do that, right? Yeah. And it's just like everyone has a different, um, you know, different rituals when it comes to this stuff. But it's just always find a place to like reset your brain and like let go of that stress because it will help you at the end of the day when it comes to testing and also like it will help a lot with your mentality. Um, Because then uh, when I'm stressed, sometimes um, I just have these outbursts, especially with my parents because I'm around them a lot. And I feel terrible because then it's just like it's not because i'm acting out because i don't like them it's more like i'm acting out because i'm so stressed yeah and i haven't had an opportunity to really you know let go of it and all that like all that inner like turmoil that inner like anxiety due to like um all the studying you've been doing it just comes out in outbursts and and that's something i feel like not uh something that we should not do because mm-hmm. it will affect uh, relationships, whether it be with your parents or your friends. Because then out of nowhere, you're just going to act like this and it's just going to be super weird, right? And so, so really just give yourself some you time and really oh, yes. just g- give yourself a break. Like, what, like also try some meditation. I've heard from a lot of the homies that meditation has been working and helps them reset. So go ahead and try that and let me know how it goes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you were talking about how, like, uh, two big stress relievers for you was climbing and swimming, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what was, I'm just curious, like, what was your schedule for that? Like, even though that all kind of gets wrecked during finals, <laughs> oh, like, 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 <laughs> like, what, like, what is your schedule for that, like, during a typical week of nursing before mid oh, finals? Shit, and how does man. that get just, like, fucked over? During all that? Yeah, so it's, it's going to be a lot, I think. Um, I would, because uh, I have work Tuesday, Thursdays. Um, so right after school, I would go to work, which was from, I think, 3.30 to 9.30, something like that, because I work at a pool. I'm a lifeguard. So uh, after that, the the homie and I that works there, we go, uh, we do our nightly ritual. We go to the climbing gym, climb for two hours and go back home to sleep. So those two days I, I go climb. Um, and sometimes if we have, you know, the climbing, uh, the rock climbing club at USF, we have our um, weekly meetings on Fridays at uh, Planet Granite. And I go to that also. Um, and when it comes to working out and swimming, I do it. Uh, I do swimming in between classes because that only takes an hour. Um, so if I have an hour or two hour break in between classes, I would go to the the. Um, I haven't been in school so long. I forgot Correct. what the re- yeah. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I haven't been in school so long. I forgot the name of the facility. I was just gonna say. I was gonna say USF Recreational Facility. <laughs> so yeah, I correct. I was swimming at correct just for a little bit. Um, and it, I, I swam with some of the homies too because I think we had the same. We had the same schedule, um, so we were able to go together and do some swimming before. And for working out, that, that was usually also in the afternoon after all my classes have been done because uh, weightlifting for me, it just 
takes a lot more, uh, takes a lot longer. I take upwards of two hours to finish my workouts. Um, so that takes up uh, a, a big chunk, uh, a big chunk of my day. So I'm, I'm usually just working out at least six, six days a week, six to seven days a week. There's always something going on. And then when final weeks comes around, you know, it just, it's gone. You know, fucking Thanos snap that shit oh my gone God, from my schedule. Dude. Let me tell you, yeah, because because on all those times I allocated for me to have uh, my exercise to keep myself healthy, both physically and mentally, it's just it's just gone, and I think that's just one of the things that um, I started to get better at mm-hmm. uh, instead of just eliminating everything. I like, always try to have something going on, mm-hmm. like have something to look forward to. Yep. Like for example, like I said, I work Tuesday, Thursdays. So okay, I won't work on Monday, but I can look forward to climbing on Tuesday if I took the time to study. Yeah. Oh shit. This is terrible. All right. Oh, hey. Yeah. Sorry about that little <laughs> interruption there. Technical difficulties, but we're back. But yes. But yeah. Oh damn. I, I feel so bad for listening. It's just, gonna, it's just gonna be like a little gap in between everything, and then we're gonna start talking again. Damn, it's okay. I it's think. on YouTube. They can just like skip forward a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. Like I was talking about um, just my schedule. So like just just find the little times in between. Like I said, um, I found that time in between where I was looking forward to going climbing on Tuesday, Thursdays, and then I had I allocated the other days to really study the whole day. And really enabled myself to get all the studying done and have like mental resets every now and then and you know also game in between yeah. like if i have the time um now that we're in quarantine i have a lot more time to like go on my computer and just like hey with my friends there um but during school with so much going on i i rarely uh was on my computer gaming as much as i do now so i always just find that good medium you know have something in, in place for where you can have like a little mental reset and on that note, I just want to ask you, like, how, how about your schedule? And, like, how, how did you deal with, like, all the studying with what you have going on? Hmm. Well, pre-quarantine, um, I didn't have, like, actually, no, I did, where uh, on a weekly basis, I think almost every day I would also go to the gym as well. Uh, nice. It really did depend on the semester and, like, the class mm-hmm. schedule. But, like, I would try to allocate at least, like, an hour and a half of time just to work out, like, five days a week. And I think it was really nice at the end of sophomore one or sophomore two when um, Jordan, Jordan Lowe, the homie, uh, he was Shout our- Shout out to Jordan Lowe. <laughs> yeah, he was our sophomore two rep. No, he was just our, like our sophomore rep for MSNS. And he created this thing where, you know, on a weekly basis, it would be like a spike ball thing. Mm. So Jordan, myself, and like, no one really ever showed up, but we, so we just invited other people outside of MS, yeah. MSNS to come with us. But then like, like I think after funds, which is like almost a four hour class, like every Thursday after we would just mm-hmm. like go and play spike ball or ping pong. And it was just super, super nice. And then yeah. on top of that, I would just um, maybe like two or three times a week when I was feeling like super, super stressed, I would just go by myself to Corette and just play basketball, like just shoot yeah. a couple of hoops. Cause I think, in those moments of playing ping pong, spike ball, basketball, those were the moments where I felt like my mind was truly free to think about nothing, but also think about anything else at the same time. Yeah, it was just yeah. super, super freeing. And it was, and it was really nice. And then I think, you know, tying back to what you said, I think what was really important was kind of what you said about how having something to look forward to in your rock climbing or swimming. Cause I think um, a lot of people don't have that during finals or midterms where all they see in their immediate future is the quizzes and tests. So yes. they kind of feel like their world is just. Yeah. That, that final, like, yeah. you know, you marked on your calendar. It's just yeah. right there. That's the only thing you're looking forward to. And you don't want to look forward to that. Yeah. But I think when you have that thing, when you have like a break where it's climbing or ping pong or whatever, yeah. when you have that break to look forward to, I think it makes you work that much harder in the very present of like studying so that you can have that break where you deserve that break. Cause I think a lot of people during finals, including myself, especially freshman two, freshman one, I didn't feel like I ever deserved a break during that last week of finals. Oh, yeah, I always yeah, felt like, yeah. Oh my God, like if I, I don't, work, 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 yeah. yeah, it's, I don't know. Like, I love the grind. Like you see, you, like I said, yeah. like when you go to the library, you, you know, you see everybody else. It's like, I love this shit. I live for this shit. But at the same time, like I cannot with this at all. <laughs> it's, it's a funny, it's a funny balance that, 
actually no i i kind of like it's not even a balance i think during fine like you try to find that balance throughout the semester but then you kind of but i think during finals there's no balance like it's there's going to be a tilt one way or the other mm -hmm. but you just kind of have to find something to somewhat even it out but there's mm -hmm. going to be a tilt no matter what yeah have you ever felt like um sometimes you're just so over it like you're just done studying you're just like fuck this like i'm i'm over it and i'm just gonna like do whatever i need to do just to just chill before the final have you ever had an experience like that i think i had i'm trying to think of a specific semester i want yeah i want to i don't want to get too vague i want to like give the people something you're very specific <laughs> you're very specific like yeah. some shit that really happened yeah. yeah also sorry there's like construction happening like right literally right next to me but um it was during my sophomore two semester when yeah. we were in quarantine. It was um, because uh, I think a week, literally just a week or a couple of days before our mm -hmm. finals was our first HESI, like the HESI. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I spent so I spent an unhealthy amount of time studying for the HESI. Like for three weeks straight, I would study. I don't even want to say, I'll, we'll leave it for another podcast. But like I studied unhealth, <laughs> a very unhealthy yeah, yeah, amount. Yeah. yeah. So that when it came time to like, um after the HESI like once I passed like I was just super relieved I was like I'm over I'm over nursing I'm over medicine for a good minute because I'm just so burnt out but then yeah. you had the I had the finals to go through yeah and I, I didn't even know I had a final in like two or three days like I think it was the funds final but like I was just so out of it that I just forgot and people had to remind me like Jordan had to remind me like yo Ryan are you ready I'm like Absolutely for what? Not. <laughs> ready for what, bro. And yeah. Like, yeah but I like during when I like I think I only studied like like to be honest, like two hours total mm -hmm. for that final because oh, I was because I was just like cause I, one way I thought I was like oh I've been studying funds this whole semester for the HESI, but at the same time I was like I was so over it. like I just couldn't yeah, not even just, because just burnt out yeah not uh, even because I was like mad about anything like I was very happy that I passed the HESI. that's like I was so happy but like like yeah, I wasn't mad I was just like I can't like my brain literally cannot mm -hmm. handle any more yeah exactly. Nursing. You know, yeah. like like I just want to add on to like the same thing for me. I took a few weeks to study for HESI and by the time like all my other finals came out, I'm, like, I'm so tired, I'm over this shit. You know, like it's just really hard to always keep that A game on. Sometimes you just gotta like go and just do your own thing. And yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so it's, tough. It's kind of funny because um it, uh this thing that's happened because of that. Um and I'm not saying like I'm not trying to scare people about the Hesse or like finals mm -hmm. or anything, but yeah, like, this is just like, no, this no. is like our take on it. Um, mm -hmm. And it was that um, I was like, one thing that I would love to do, like in my free time was like watch Netflix, Hulu. I would like to watch these medical shows, like the good doctor or the resident stuff like that. Right. But then, <laughs> for some reason after the Hesse, I just couldn't take any more medicine. And I have not <laughs> watched those so shows since like, I can't yes, watch them. Yes, yes. Like, I don't know why it's, it's like my problem, but it's just something in my mind where like, I can't, I can't handle any more of this like healthcare stuff right now. Mm -hmm. And I still haven't gone back. I should probably get back to the show because I love them, <laughs> but like, yeah. I just haven't been able of like my brain just won't let me do it for some reason mm -hmm. like i've been scarred even though it, was, it wasn't it was that bad but i'm you're scarred just like, you're just trying to be like oh shit I, I, i'm missing no 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 yeah nah. it's cool medical nah i'm good yeah like that was the first time i ever felt like true true burnt out from like a final yeah. or you know the hesse like mm -hmm. that was that was I don't know. Yes, if if anyone's just curious about like our HESI experience, I think we'll we'll be diving into that in a different podcast. Yeah, yeah. just most because definitely. yeah, because I think um, finals are coming up more um, closer to us, and we just wanted to talk about finals a little bit more. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and us sharing these stories about finals and everything, like we're like yes, like you know, take some of this advice because I truly do believe it's helpful. But like for all the other stories that we're talking about, how we were kind of just like stressed and frantic about everything, like that's like our take. It can be your take too, but yeah. like don't let it stress you out too much. Yeah, I think yeah, everyone. Yeah. I like. I feel like sometimes I exaggerate because it's me looking back to a time when I was when I think I was like that. But like everyone has their own experience. Yeah. And I don't think it should really foreshadow anything mm -hmm. for you. You know, like. Well, when you when you <laughs> when you look back at it, you're like, "Damn, I was stressed." Yeah, you know. But like when you're in the moment, you're just like, "Damn, I just gotta work on this." Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you don't really think about the stress that much. And like having that reflection, being able to reflect, really it like helps you even more in your future. You know, mm -hmm. Wh whether it be you choose to do something else outside of nursing, and even in your nursing career, right? You just 
try to have some reflection, give yourself some time just to look back and see what you could have done a little bit better or what, what you've done really, really well and apply it to what you're going to do later. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So that, that's what like, that's what's something I've been learning throughout my, my nursing school. Cause it didn't start out like picture perfect. Right. I, I had, I had major roadblocks, man. When it, whether it come, came to grades or like, whether it came to fucking building relationships with others, I, I had that roadblock, you know, and, and we'll, we'll talk about this later also on a different podcast about how we, how we got it all through this. But, you know, just learning from all those mistakes and learning from what, what you help, what helped you succeed really enables you to get better at nursing school. It's a process, mm-hmm. right? So it's, it's not going to be something that you get a, a, as soon as possible, right? It's something that you develop yeah. throughout your schooling. And I think having that process struggling and learning from it that's what makes nursing school truly memorable yes like yes, in a hundred percent like mm-hmm. when you think back at, like when i think back about my freshman year or even my sophomore year i don't really like sometimes i don't remember specific content I'm like oh i remember this class when we did this like mm-hmm. i don't remember too much of that but one thing i do remember is those times of struggle during those finals when I was like down in the hole and just trying to dig myself out, trying to grind super hard and what I learned from it. That's what I remember. And that's, what's going to, that's what probably the lessons I've learned. I'm going to carry that throughout my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I think um, even if you are stressed during this time, um, I think when you do look back at it, like, I think all you think about, you just laugh. I think, I think you only think about the fond memories yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like I remember, was it sophomore one even though like people regard it as like you know an easier semester compared to other semesters like for me I think regardless of the semester I'm still going to be super stressed during yeah. finals and but it was um I think in the moment I was probably only thinking about all the hard topics that I need to know stressing about this and stressing about that but when I look like think back to it now all I remember was literally just you know ordering a lot of food with the homies mm, and yeah, being at the yeah. library eating and like laughing hysterically from like sleep <laughs> deprivation it's like just like the funniest stuff yeah. ever like you just remember the fond memories and i think yeah those periods of struggle they create a b- bigger bond and that's what i'm going to carry with me for the rest of my life yeah just just adding on to that just piggyback off of that it's not like i don't want everyone to think about like nursing school as a struggle it, it's it's a really like big learning experience yeah Right. It's not a struggle. You're just learning a lot of information that you need to succeed in your nursing career. And USF provides a lot of that for you. But it's up to you whether or not you want to utilize that when you become a nurse. Mm-hmm. Right. I think that's what makes a good nurse a good nurse. Yeah. Right. They, they, they take what they've learned from their nursing school and really apply that to what, wherever they're working. Right. So just w- when it comes to this kind of type of stuff, too. I just want everyone to know that it it comes, it's also in a perspective, right? Take what you can and learn from it. And and just really, that's how you get better at at life, at nursing, right? Because you take all that in and you're just like, oh, okay, I could have done this a little bit better. And I I could have, okay, like coming up to this final, I could have studied a little bit more here and I can do, I can apply that for the next one, right? It's all about molding yourself into like, a super good student and a super good nurse, right? It's all about perspective. So don't take it way too, like, I'm not telling you not to take it seriously. It's just more like find a way where it, it doesn't seem like it's just an endless struggle, you mm-hmm. know? Because yeah. for sure you're going to have a period of time where it's just like, yeah, I, I, I am struggling. I'm just not getting the content. But like at the end of the day, I, I just want everyone to take away a little bit uh, of everything from what they've experienced and just, put it all together and then finalize everything at the end of the day because I know people are going to be struggling but I also know that at, at when we graduate these people will become fantastic nurses yes yes and kind of hearing from what you kind of said it just if it kind of sounds like both you and I and I think a lot of nursing students if not most nursing students um as they go through the nursing program I think they just become a lot more efficient at studying efficient at what they need to know how they mm. need to know it at the correct time because i yes. think yes, during, yes, yes. yeah yeah during sure. freshman year i didn't know anything i was like i don't oh, know yeah, how dude. this works so i would i was over studying to the fullest capacity but then i think yeah. you just learn how tests go you learn um 
most importantly, that critical thinking mindset, which I think, you know, I think you talked about it earlier where sometimes it's not necessarily like just memorizing everything and just mm-hmm. knowing the content. It's like, if you have that strong foundation for mm-hmm. thinking exactly. critically, yeah. then you can like think through, you can literally think through a lot of the questions. Yeah. Like at first fundamentals was super hard. I think I got like a D or a C on my first fundamental test because I didn't have that nursing brain, mm-hmm. you know? And then like, as time went on, I just, I blasted you the final. I was like, okay, I got this. I got this. I got this. You know, it's, 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 it's all just a development. It's all a process. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah. I think that's a common struggle that I've noticed when I've talked to a lot of the freshmen or people that are like, even some family members that are like seniors in high school, think that's something mm-hmm. they're concerned about is because like that transition from, you know, mostly memorization to critical thinking i because i think it's not just a nursing thing i'm sure it's like a healthcare thing it's probably in other fields as well where you know you go to college you realize oh i can't just memorize everything and just get Mm -hmm. everything right anymore it's like oh they're gonna ask questions where i need to like really really know my shit or just really really know how to think this through yes how to think this through it's not it's not necessarily like you're always gonna have a correct answer Mm -hmm. but like you're gonna have a correct way of like processing yeah yeah Right. Yeah. So like through that process, because, okay, like, let's be honest. We all hate the fucking select all about apply answers. Like all, all, all those, all those questions, right? Those they are kind of rough, you know? No, those They're fucking suck. Cause if you don't, if you don't get one of them, you don't get all of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That shit fucking it sucks. I man. forgot about that. <laughs> like, oh but I think just what helps me, helped me out a lot. is just like having that nursing process when I'm doing that and it's just like, okay, yeah, I can hundred percent eliminate this. Like, even though I know it's like somewhat right, I know like through, through my experiences and through how I've been learning about nursing, uh, nursing, it's just like, okay, yeah, this one's for sure. Not it. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I've been doing really well on those select all that apply, um, uh, questions when it, whether it come up on, t- uh, comes up on tests or like it comes up during lecture, I, mm-hmm. I do a okay job at doing that. Yeah. And I think, um, one thing that you said, was kind of how it wasn't just like the content of the lectures, but it was your experience. And I think that's mm-hmm. something that a lot of other majors miss out mm-hmm. on when they have those select all the ply or those difficult critical mm-hmm. thinking questions. Cause I think as nursing students, we're fortunate enough to have that clinical experience where, you know, if you're on a specific question during a test, we're like, Oh my God, I don't know. I don't remember this yeah. from the lecture or the book. Like you can kind of, it kind of, I feel like there's something in your brain that kind of connects you to a past Turn, experience. We're like, yeah. oh shoot, I remember doing that Foley catheter. I remember mm-hmm. doing this and like, you can answer it. Like that had literally saved me yeah. a bunch of times during, yeah, yeah. Um, during finals and like midterms. So I think, you know, really get the most out of your clinical yeah. experience as possible. Like that's exactly. a, I think that's and a big it, thing. And it comes out of like your sims too. Like yeah. simulations are super important and also like your skills check off. Like a lot of those things that you learn do apply to what you've been doing, uh, what you will be doing um, in the nursing world and what's going to come up on the test. Mm -hmm. So just really try to take those a little bit more serious. Um, It's less about memorization. It's more like critically thinking about uh, when's the appropriate time to do this or like, um, why am I doing this? Always ask yourself why you're doing that uh, task specifically. And at the end of the day, you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. Like, Mm -hmm. Um, you're you're in USF nursing for a reason. Yeah. Right. Everyone's here is academically adequate. Mm-hmm. You know. So don't don't give yourself or just don't downplay what, what how hard you've been working and how hard you it, it took how hard it took you to like get into this nursing school like the amount of um like struggle you've had and like to get over here you're you're here already. Yeah. Right. You know, and just like just put in just a tiny little bit more work, mm-hmm. and you're gonna succeed. I I truly believe that for everyone in the nursing program. I tell my parents all the time. It's just like, yo, it's not just me that's like academically okay. Like mm-hmm. everyone here, oh is yeah, fucking raw at yeah. school. So I'm boosting up everyone's ego right now. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, you guys are good at school. Right? Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Even yeah. though nursing school is hard, right? Always have that confidence that you'll you'll be able to get through it, and you'll be do you'll you'll be fine. Because right? mm-hmm. I believe in every single one of you guys. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Everything that Alan said is like a hundred percent, a hundred percent true. Where yeah. yeah, like we're in nursing school for a reason. Like we got yes. in. Like not to inflate everybody's egos even more, but like <laughs> but we're nah, just like we're inflating yeah. egos right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're here. We're here, and like 
I guess, yeah, you're kind of like, we're here now, so it's kind of just up to you of what you want to do with that. Take it for, you know, what it is. Or take it for what yeah. you want to do with it. But, yeah, we're going to be here, and I think, I don't know. It just, I don't know. I feel like it's weird where, um, where even though amongst all the difficult things, all the struggles, all the fear of Hesse and everything, mm-hmm. like somehow, I don't know if it's, I think just the people, the community, if it's specifically MSNS or just a nursing community at USF in general, yep. they kind of make it seem like everything is going to be okay. Like amongst all the scary things that's going to happen, yeah, like everything is going like, to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Be yeah. Because I think they, like you have a lot of trust in your community and they have mm-hmm. a lot of trust in you where, hey, they're going to be there to always help you if you need a hand. Exactly. But at the same time, they trust that you're going to work your ass off no matter what. And I think mm-hmm. that mutual trust and that understanding kind of just builds on top of each other and creates what a nurse really is, what a nursing student will become. Yeah. And I think it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, and just, I think something to just ultimately wrap up uh, like all this testing stuff we've been talking about. Um, I just want to ask you, Ryan, like, how did you feel after like taking all your finals and how did you like how did you how did you celebrate how did I celebrate? How, how, how'd you how, how'd you like get your hooray in you know after yeah. like after doing all your finals like i like i want everyone to just know that, that that's the light at the end of the tunnel yes you know yes like after you're done with the finals that sigh of relief like i just want to ask ryan like who like what are some experiences that happened to Ooh. you after your finals or what, what, what are like some of the things that you really look forward to after that let's see let me think i think um for freshman one and freshman two like right after our finals for like the big science classes we went out to lunch Mm because we always had finals in the morning so we always had lunch uh like lunch together and it made it a really big thing we celebrated cheers and all that but i think uh and then i think sophomore one um after all the finals and then i had like a last minute ethics paper that i had to like do after i clicked submit and it was the greatest feeling of my life <laughs> uh i think um our block went to dave and busters in daily city yes. where I'm from. like it was it was so lit so yeah like like alan said like like even though like you're working super hard and it feels like this finals week or finals weeks so is gonna like last forever there is a light at the end of the tunnel there is like a time where you will be able to celebrate those highs yeah. with the people that you went through all the lows with. And I think, yeah. How about you? Yeah. Did you, did you do anything like that? Or did you have like some big thing or some sigh of relief after all the struggle? Yeah. It's just like, after I walk out of that room, I'm just like, yes, let's yeah. go, bro. Like oh, I'm done. Yeah. I'm fucking done with this shit. Yeah. Cause then we have like long breaks in between. So I look forward nice. to just, you know, I think after the finals, mm-hmm. like all my, all the homies are done. We just go out and go eat and chat and yeah. talk about like what happened in the finals just for a little bit. And then just talk about how we felt. And that really helps. Um, is getting together, getting some food. Cause at least for me, I think food is very therapeutic. You love um, it. Cause yes. then when, once you like finish something hard or you succeeded, it's just like, dude, that food just tastes even better. Mm, you know? 100%. It, it tastes 100%. even more amazing. Yes. Like whether it be fucking McDonald's or you are, yeah. are going to Fago the Chow or some shit, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like it's just going to taste that much better. Okay. Yeah. Cause no, you, you've earned it. You earned it. Like, yes. Oh, okay, you earned it. You mm-hmm. know, like that, that, that shit's real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think, yeah, what you're saying, sorry. Oh, no, I'm just saying like, yeah, there's some, there, there's breaks to look forward to. Yeah. Like, at, you're, you're going to be done studying and be like, oh, finally, I can go back to my regimen and go go do my sports or like do my exercises. Finally, mm-hmm. I can go hang out with my friends. And finally, I can grind to Diamond and Valorant. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. And I think, yeah, Alan points out like a very, very big thing that I think a lot of nursing students, including myself, has missed where... um. Uh, we don't really allow ourselves that enjoyment and happiness after something big like that. Cause you know, mm. you know, and like when we're saying all this, we're not saying like, Oh fuck nursing school. We're not saying anything like that. No, we're no, saying, no, no. no, we're saying like after <laughs> like this whole semester of you kind of sacrificing so much of yourself and of your time, dedicating so much to something that you love, which is nursing. Like you should be allowed to have that kind of sigh of relief, that outward expression. Like, yes, yeah. I finally finished. I am done with all this shit. And I want to enjoy, like, because give yourself time to enjoy that. Like, don't yeah. kind of minimize it 
where like, hey, you know, okay, now I got to move on to the next semester. I got to like, you know, this was a big thing, but this is what I expected of myself. Like, don't do that. Like, bro, give yourself that credit because you work your ass off. No matter mm-hmm. what anybody else says, no matter who you try to compare yourself to, like you work so hard in your individual sense that you should be proud and go enjoy yourself for a little bit before you got to get back on the grind, you know? Yeah, like I'm not promoting alcoholism or anything because I personally don't drink. But if you're of age, hey, go go out and go have go that party it. when quarantine's go over and when you're done with finals and go ahead and take that extra shot for me, okay? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, if you guys are really close to the MSNS community, like I think we don't have any official events, but I think like, I think Jordan and I have tried to done it with like our spike ball events where like, or anything where, yo celebrate with the msns homies like mm-hmm. yeah. you know like have fun like we, you, yeah. yeah we've all been through the same thing whether no matter what cohort you're in like we're all going through that struggle and we're all going to celebrate together so yeah, yeah i want to i i like i don't know how long it'll be until then hopefully by senior year we can get back on campus kind of have a little yeah, bit hopefully. of normalcy but like yeah. i want to have that time where i can see you guys the viewers or just like the general members mm-hmm. and celebrate with you guys like congratulations you just yeah. passed the hezzy congratulations yeah you know? like like that's such a big thing passing your first hezzy right it's, it's such a, a bro it's so big bro it's crazy <laughs> like even for those that took a few more times and they succeeded like that's totally okay and for those that finished the first time it's just really good to just celebrate but yeah. i think we took our hessies like at the beginning of quarantine like in may or at the end of april i forget and and, and it was just super hard because then you're just like oh i finished <laughs> mm-hmm. i did it you know it's just it's, it feels different yeah i don't it know was I, so different yeah like i remember um because like i kind of hear like talk about my story but then i also compare it to other people's stories when like like the upperclassmen because like for me right when I finished the HESI, like, I was super pumped, the camera was still on, I'm sure they were the moderators, they might have been looking, but I, I was, was just jumping up and bro. down, I was like, but, fuck, yeah, but then, you like you said, like, oh, there's no one else really to celebrate with, like, of course, you had family, but, like, it's different than being oh, yeah, with, like, your sure. other nursing students, but I remember sure. when RJ was talking about his experience, or, like, other people, when they pass, like, it was a weird thing where everybody was celebrating together, but at the same time, there were a couple of homies that yeah. didn't pass, so it was, like, this weird thing, but I think I would still probably trade my experience now for that, even though like some people won't make it out of it. I think it's just good to have that community, whether you celebrate together or, you know, you kind of have that emotional yeah. moment together. where like, hey, it's going to be OK. We're going to collect ourselves and get yeah. through it. And you guys, for, for those that are worried about it, like it, it's OK. You have multiple chances to take it. Mm-hmm. Right. Really take those chances to heart. And if you can do it the first time, go ahead. More more power to you. But if you need to take a second time, it's hundred percent okay. Yes. You're you're in yes. the like I said yes. before, you're in the nursing school for a reason. Yes. You are motherfucking smart. Okay. Yes. Like you got this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I, I'm just my heart goes out to for those that real feel really bad that they didn't pass the first time. Like it's okay. Like I like at MSNS, I want to be like someone that um I can be there to support too, you know, and it's okay. You'll be, you'll be fine. And yeah. for those, I think sophomore, sophomore ones right now, right. They're going to take the HESI next semester. I'm pretty sure. Mm. Like you guys got it. Like yeah. don't trip too much about it. Like right now, just focus on your classes, right. HESI is like a few months away. Like if you guys ever have anything, you can always ask up classmate to always help oh, you yeah. guys out. 100%. Like we're always here for you guys and giving you guys any resources or any tips that you guys need. Yeah. Yeah, and even though we kind of hype you guys up, boost you up, inflate that ego, like just know that there is a very big and somewhat technically, like in a way, like subtle distinction between confidence and cockiness. We don't mm-hmm. want to promote any cockiness where, yes. like, just say, "Hey, don't worry about the Hesse. Like, mm-hmm. you're you're good. Like, no, like you should not be that cocky going into a, such a big test. You should yeah. be confident in your abilities because you've studied that much. Mm-hmm. But don't make sure you're not uh, going into it." blind hopefully and just yes. hoping like oh yeah no i got this like people said mm-hmm. i got this like no you gotta study you gotta work mm-hmm. your ass off for that stuff yeah and, and you'll reap the benefits at the end of the day yeah you'll be happy for for why you studied so much yeah, go celebrate you. enjoy yourself have that you know play basketball yeah. go climbing once permitted and all that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 go ahead and get whatever food you like man i think one of my favorite foods to probably get after getting uh, after finishing finals is probably like K barbecue or something. Oh yeah, that always hits the spot. Because yes. in your it's just community driven. Um, you're always with your friends. You can cook together, have a laugh together. It's always good. Um, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and you know, for the freshmen out there that are watching, like, don't worry, you will have your time. I, I'm sure, like, I empathize with you. I'm like, I'm just, like, you guys are probably going through so much that we didn't have to. And I commend you guys for like pushing through and trucking on. Mm-hmm. But you know, hopefully, you know, and there will be a light at the end of the tunnel. You guys will have this chance and have these opportunities that Alan and I are talking about. And I think, you know, you guys going through all the lows, it's just gonna make the highs that much. Better. Yeah, it's that it's much better. Expensive. I agree. Like, I'm just jealous that they got to have online school for all their labs and all that everything bro i we like so that fucking some, lucky, of it was, some of it was okay though it was kind of fun I okay no like, not the labs but like the classes at least that's true that was yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> 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 yeah it just like hit me i was like oh yeah some of oh. it was oh yeah yeah no, but we can talk about will... we'll yeah we'll talk about another podcast <laughs> you, you guys will have have um time to experience everything that we have like freshman year is one of the mo the more closer to what high school is than <clears throat> excuse me than all the other years so you guys will have that time to come back on campus and experience everything like that yeah yeah, yeah and you know as we cl- close out you know i do like to give a special shout out to anybody who has uh, stayed to the for the entire podcast we love you guys we support you guys. Love. thank you for supporting love. us <laughs> love it and also like a weird thing that like i don't think i need to bring up but i think i should is um I think are swearing in a way like because I think uh, some people are cons- like yeah. some, I think I'd, some people would be concerned but I think just know that I I don't think this is technically affiliated with USF and plus um, I think Al- the goal for Alan and I is to keep this podcast as raw as possible and mm-hmm. to keep and like because when we swear we don't really do it unintentionally like there's always a purpose oh yeah like, for sure yeah to like, emphasize like we want to make sure that uh we're being vulnerable and like mm-hmm. expressing our emotions i think some you know it, to be real that's what real nursing is like yeah. you're gonna hear swearing <laughs> out there like i've yeah, a ton of like sure. almost all of my preceptors and nurses have swore to me like not to the patients obviously but just like yeah. it's part of the emotional aspect it's part of like life in general i think that shouldn't continue to be suppressed mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. be like a taboo thing you know exactly because then just adding on to what ryan's saying it's just like our plan going into this like as me as an intern like coming in as like a new person on the, onto the podcast we wanted to have like a super raw conversation not just with each other but with you guys mm-hmm. right because we want to build that connection and really have our listeners like understand our emotions and understand how passionate yeah. we are not just about uh msns but just nursing school and other things in general Mm-hmm. you know we're, we're, we're people too right yeah, yeah. We're, we're not just robots man yeah. right like as much as i uh i i i would be okay with, with not swearing in a podcast like this i think it just builds such a better connection with everyone i think so yeah right and it just makes us feel that much more real mm-hmm. you know because we're 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 nursing students like you guys we've got those same moments that you guys have been going through mm-hmm. right and just like having the ability to just like insert some profanity here and there just enables us to have the that emotion have that have that you know that energy going into it when oh we're speaking. yeah you know it, it hits different for it sure it's different yeah. yeah so i i hope everyone's uh okay with that <laughs> yeah yeah but you know we appreciate it and i think you know having alan on the podcast and you know just going forward this is kind of like a new chapter in the podcast and you know i'm truly excited for what alan has to offer i'm truly excited for you know all the incoming guests and everything that's going on this is going to be here yeah this is going to be great and i'm truly excited and yeah thank you everyone for watching you know please make sure to like and subscribe and all that and we will see you all next time thank you deuces much love